The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And welcome and thank you for joining us here on The Factor on Censor tonight. There are concerns about beloved veteran actor John Amos. You may remember him as James Evans from Good Times and also on the Maude TV show. He is suffering from elder abuse, or at least that's what we're told at the hands of his family. The claims came to light more than a week ago and it's been a stir on social media. His da daughter, Shannon Amos, set up a GoFundMe asking for, get this, $500,000 to help for his care and legal fees, claiming he's a victim of theft and elder abuse. John Amos has refused everything that his daughter has said, or refuted, rather. He says he's actually in the hospital because of fluid in his lower body. But Amos says his daughter is lying. The GoFundMe has since been shut down. That fiasco has left many questions about the truth of the situation and what you should do if your parents are caught in this situation. What should be done? Let's talk about it tonight here on The Factor Uncensored. We have our guests on The Factor, Siobhan Carr and also Todd Smith. So, Siobhan, all, all of us loves, all of us, we love James Evans from Good Times. And when you saw this story, what did you think about it? I thought it was an unfortunate situation, but it's also a situation that we see more and more often, especially as we have the baby boomer population growing older. We are, are dealt with having to deal, having to care with our elders. And so we we see allegations of elder abuse and neglect happening more and more and a lot of sometimes we see that come between the division between the two family members as we're seeing with Mr. Amos's situation. And of course Todd we know that whenever someone gets older and then someone has to step up and take care of mom or dad Definitely. there's always that dispute about money whatever as, yeah. as my mom used to say the little chunk of change yeah, that they yeah, have yeah. everyone's fighting over it and it's, it's a shame but I think we all need to realize that we're gonna die one day and we need to make an effort to put per certain people in place and have certain things already situated so people won't fight. Yeah, your kids might get mad that you put this person in charge or this person gets the house or this person gets that, but if you need to put your wishes out there so you won't have family members fighting. So a lot of us, and I hate to stereotype certain communities, but I, I hear a lot of people from the African-American community say, oh, we need to do a better job of planning. We want to pretend like this is not going to happen. And we even see what oh, uh, celebrities, Prince didn't have a will, Aretha Franklin didn't have a will, and you had family members fighting over what things should be released after death and stuff like that. So we have to come to the realization that we're all going to leave this earth and it's an uncomfortable situation. I've had the conversation with my parents. She put who she wanted in charge. If she couldn't handle certain situations, we never thought we would be in this position that we would have to show this paperwork and do these things, but it's going to happen regardless. So plan so your family won't. And even if you do plan, you will have family members still bickering sometimes, mm -hmm. but you can't do anything. If mother or father said, this is what I want, that's what it is. And that's where Siobhan Carr comes in. Correct. Uh, estate planning, planning for those last final days. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't do it. Yes, um, so we have we hear a lot of discussion about wills, and the will is going to take care of you in the event of your passing. Yeah. But we have to look at documents to put in place that are going to take care of you while you are alive, mm -hmm. and those are going to be your medical powers attorneys, your durable powers attorneys, and in those documents you'll get to decide who you want to make your medical decisions, who do you want to make your financial decisions. And I always advise my clients once you make those decisions in paper and we memorialize it in writing, have that conversation with your family members, have it with everyone, those who are included and those who are not included so th if and when the time comes where we have to act on those documents there's no confusion we've had this conversation before and we've memorialized it in writing and also you want a physician's directive you want uh, the, the the person to determine what you will do in certain situations I have family members who say don't put me on life support mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my mother's like keep me on life support mm -hmm. so these are the decisions you have to have and it's a, it's a it's a hard conversation my cousin lost his father a few years ago and he told him this is where I want to be buried I remember my grandmother telling me how she wants to be buried. You don't want to hear those conversations, but if you have those conversations, hopefully you will alleviate some of those family problems. Like, you won't totally eliminate them, because people act a fool with money. I hate to say it, and John Amos probably had more than many the of us. The average person. The, the average, average person, person, so Absolutely. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. And Siobhan, for those who are wondering, though, if you don't put it in writing, mm -hmm. any little money that you may have, 
that could be eaten up by the courts, by attorneys' mm -hmm. fees, by uh, conservators Correct. who are overseeing the case until it's done. And by the time you get to it, there may be nothing left. That's correct. So when we have situations where we, we consider it family bickering and we go in front of the courts, a lot of times you may not get the results that you intend. You may have a third party that's going to be set up to be the director, excuse me, to be the guardian mm -hmm. of that individual, and those aren't cheap. And it costs so money. It, everything is going to cost money when we are not agreeing and not following um, plans that we've already put in place. And so what would be your best advice for families out there who may deal, who may be dealing with this? A will, what else yes. should they put in place even while they're alive. So I think one of the main, what I consider ancillary estate planning documents that you need to have in place that are going to take care of you while you're alive. That's going to be your medical power of attorney, your durable power of attorney, your HIPAA release, your medical directive. That's a document that decides what your end of life care is and a declaration of guardian because a declaration of guardian is a document that states who you want to be your guardian in the event there's ever a need for a guardianship. But what it does also, it gives you a chance to state who you would want to disqualify qualify from ever filing guardianship over you. <laughs> I don't ever, <laughs> ever, 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 ever want this kid mm -hmm. in charge of me. And that's when, that in practice, that's the times when I've had to use that document the most, is when that child or the individual who's been listed as someone to be disqualified as a guardian has gone and applied for guardianship over an elder. All right. Siobhan Carr, attorney. You can find her on social media and also in the phone. Do <laughs> you have a phone book? <laughs> Maybe something. I, I think it's digital now. <laughs> and Todd Smith from Regal Media, who's lived those life experiences yeah, like I have. Yeah.